and all present here i swastha kankarya of bllb fifth year welcome you all on behalf of mlm ge societies manik chand pahade law college aurangabad on the occasion of online special lecture on dr baba saheb ambedkar jayanti organized by the nss unit on behalf of the management i welcome our today's resource person professor dr revati ma'am former head of the department of constitutional law and human rights Tamil Nadu Dr Ambedkar Law University Chennai Now I would like to call upon Ms Kartiki Karaj to introduce our today's resource person Over to you Kartiki Namaste sir Namaste Hi. all the guests who are present here Hello everyone I Kartiki Dutatre Karaj student of BLLB second year Today I am here to introduce today's esteemed guest professor Dr Redivari Revati madam Madam has completed ml phd currently madam is head of the department of constitutional law and human rights and also the director of iqsc ma'am teaches constitutional law family law media law and law of elections madam worked as a resource person in national international seminar workshop conference and symposium madam also delivers special lectures as resource person in various universities Ma'am has authorized a book on domestic violence and published 25 articles in reputed legal journals. Ma'am has completed UGC sponsored major research project on assisted reproductive technology with regard to women's reproductive rights 2014 to 2014. Ma'am guided four scholars for PhD in law and six more are working under her guidance. Ma'am presented paper in 60 conferences. workshops both in india and abroad ma'am has visited malaysia singapore mauritius as academic assi assi uh, assistant uh, ma'am served as a syndicate member of tamil nadu dr ambedkar law university chennai ma'am has been with your permission uh, ma'am enough enough for this uh, uh, okay uh, thank you very much for your kind words uh, it okay, is not we are all academicians so not necessary all this So thank you anyway. Thank you for thank your you kind much. words. Uh, with the permission of uh, the uh, concerned uh, chairperson, uh, pr principal uh, professor uh, uh, Dr. Monica Rao sir, uh, may I start, sir? Go ahead, madam. Ah uh, yes, sir. At the outset, uh, I must be very thankful for the uh, you know entire. Uh, Uh, Manikchand Pahade College uh, Law College, Aurangabad uh, team, uh, particularly the management, and uh, my uh, special thanks to Principal Professor uh, Dr. C M Rao uh, for giving me this opportunity to share my views uh, in connection with uh, the legendary uh, personality Dr. B R Ambedkar Jayanti. Uh, thank you very much, sir, once again for. Uh, uh, the opportunity to be amidst with you today in this uh, uh, great uh, legendary professor uh, uh, jayanti akeshan and uh, i was given uh, the uh, task to uh, express my views on uh, the topic uh, basic structure doctrine uh, really i am thinking that it is uh, uh, this topic assumes significance at this juncture why because Here, lot of law students are there. Don't think uh, why, ma'am. Uh, uh, she has started her lecture with questions. So why it uh, it assumes office particularly? I mean, assumes significance particularly this month. Any one of you can uh, tell me this? Okay. Um, uh, basic structure doctrine. Normally, the moment when you uh, say something about the basic structure. immediately we used to recollect the case uh, what is that at least can you tell this what is the case that we remember immediately any anyone anyone what is the case we remember the moment when you think of basic structure what is the case uh, we remember keshwananda bharti excellent as i all of us we know very well that Uh, so Keshavan and the Bharati judgment it is delivered in the year 1973 on April 24th. So in a way we are nearing to uh, this particular uh, date. Uh, so 
uh, definitely I can say that uh, this topic assumes significance uh, since uh, the date of judgment is nearing to uh, uh, mostly in this month. So, uh, and uh, when you talk something about uh, the basic structure doctrine, what is its uh, importance? How it has uh, originated this doctrine? Uh, so all this, if you look into these uh, aspects um, from the uh, constitutional, uh, as a constitutional law student. So if you take that, uh, whether uh, the fundamental rights can be amended or not. The moment when you think of basic structure doctrine, the main question involved in this, uh, the fundamental parts of the constitution that includes fundamental rights, part three particularly, can be amended or not. Just like any other part, it can be amended or not under article 368. So, uh, it came for consideration uh, 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 before the Supreme Court in uh, Sankari Prasad case for the first time when the Constitution First Amendment was challenged. And we know very well that various uh, land reforms were made. Uh, so as to you know that now a government has taken up after 1951 uh, the Constitution, uh, I mean uh, the uh, um, after first general elections and the constitution also came into force in the year 1950. So the first amendment was passed in order to give effect to certain land ceiling legislations. So one among such is uh, Senkari Prasad case uh, assumed significance here. Uh, it came for consideration uh, uh, of the Supreme Court in this particular case. Uh, uh, the validity of first when first amendment uh, was challenged the validity of this first amendment act was challenged uh, why because it was challenged it was inserted the first amendment has inserted articles two articles particularly 31a and 31b to uh, this constitution this was challenged so you know very well i don't i need not go deep into what is 31a and 31b and all the no law providing acquisition of any estate shall be deemed to be void on the uh, ground that it is violative of or abridges any of the fundamental rights. That is 31 essays, fundamental rights particularly conferred under Article 14 and 19. And uh, 31B, uh, uh, it says that none of the acts mentioned in the ninth schedule to the constitution shall be deemed to be void on the ground that so they are inconsistent with the part three of the constitution. These two articles were included by way of uh, first amendment. So the validity of such amendment was challenged, this Sankari Prasad case. And when uh, the act was challenged, it was argued um, uh, under, uh, it was argued in this particular case that See, the state under all of you, we are aware that uh, what is uh, the uh, definition of state under Article 12. See, when you uh, look into the definition of Article 12, uh, which um, uh, defines the state, so wherein it is clearly mentioned that state includes parliament and the word law under 13 class 2, you know, then 13 class 3 also it is given the definition where uh, it includes constitutional amendment. That was the argument uh, put forth uh, before uh, Sankari Prasad court. But the Supreme Court has rejected this uh, argument and made an observation that power uh, uh, to amend the constitution, including fundamental rights, power of the uh, constitution, power here, power to amend the constitution, it includes um, in, in even uh, the uh, fundamental rights uh, contained under Article 368. See, the power of the um, Article 368, power of Parliament under Article, power given and, uh, to the Parliament under 368, whether it can amend the fundamental rights or not. So, the Supreme Court um, made it very clear that um, word law and 13 uh, class 2, it is only an ordinary law and does not include a constitutional amendment. And so therefore, uh, the constitutional amendment is uh, valid even if it is abridges uh, part three of the constitution. So now it is clear for you. So Sankari Prasad case when first amendment was challenged 
So wherein uh, it is clearly stated that the Supreme Court uh, made an observation that it is made an observation that uh, even uh, fundamental rights uh, can be amended. So it is not uh, uh, amendment to the constitution is not uh, just like an ordinary law and it is something different. So it includes everything. It includes everything like you no know, fundamental rights also can be amended. Sankari Prasad case. So subsequently, the uh, fourth amendment and the 17th amendment were also uh, challenged, were also passed. And uh, these amendments were uh, challenged in, uh, uh, right, uh, what is that, uh, like um, Sajan Singh case. Sajan Singh case versus Rajasthan. So in this, uh, the Supreme Court uh, almost approved the majority opinion made by uh, Sankari Prasad case. So here, Gajendra Gadkar, he said that he, um, I don't know, that was the power to uh, amend the constitution include what was uh, laid down in uh, the Sankari Prasad case. Almost he, he has reaffirmed the, and he has concurred with the decision given uh, in uh, Sankari Prasad case. And Justice Gajendra Kadkar in Sajan Singh case also, when 17th amendment was also challenged, he made uh, uh, categorically that, had the uh, framers of the constitution intended in such a way that they would have explicitly mentioned that. So it is not uh, uh, mentioned uh, uh, in such a way. So therefore, any part of the constitution can be amended, including part three, just like any part, any provision of the constitution, part three also can be amended. Uh, and friends, uh, I would like to make a mention here. Uh, here uh, we have to notice that. And just now at the beginning of this session also, um, when I asked a question, uh, you people, you said that the and when you think of basic structure doctrine, when you think of basic structure doctrine, uh, immediately we remember uh, 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 what case? Once again, I am asking. Keshwananda Bharati. So that means all of you, you accept that Keshwananda Bharati case only, the basic structure doctrine uh, is coined, right? Isn't it? Any one of you has any yes, uh, different opinion? All of you agree with? Actually, it is not so. It is not the basic structure doctrine that was uh, um, for the first time uh, uh, coined in uh, the, I mean, in the case of Keshavananda Bharati. In Sajan Singh case, if you take that, what I made, you know, which is reaffirmed the decision of Sankari Prasad, by five judge bench. Sajan Singh is five judge bench. Three judges, Gajendra Gadkar and two other judges gave majority opinion. And two judges, Justice Hidaytullah and uh, Justice Madolkar, J.R. Madolkar, gave a dissenting opinion. It was Justice Madolkar who gave dissenting opinion for the first time in the history of Indian constitution who used the term basic features of the constitution. Therefore, I strongly affirm in this uh, uh, academic gathering that it is not the Keshavananda Bharati case for the first time the basic structure doctrine was used even prior to that uh, Keshavananda Bharati case in Sajan Singh versus state of uh, Rajasthan case. So in this case, Justice Madolkar, who gave a dissenting opinion for the first time in the Indian constitutional history, and he used the term basic features, and he questioned whether the basic features could be taken away. See, he, Justice Madolkar, along with other majority uh, judges, uh, uh, Chief Justice Gajendra Gadkar and other fellow judges, he too upheld the 17th Amendment, but he has expressed concern uh, um, more eloquently. How he was, uh, he has expressed uh, under 368, so Article 368 was to amend the Constitution, but to what extent? If Article 368 is to amend the Constitution, 
to what extent it can be amended to what extent could such power can be exercised the power given uh, to the parliament under 368 so is it an unlimited power is it unlimited so all these questions uh, uh, were raised in this uh, i mean uh, by uh, to the mind of uh, justice uh, madolkar though he was part of uh, uh, no, what is that majority opinion to certain extent? He too upheld the 17th Amendment, uh, validity of 17th Amendment, but he has expressed so many uh, views and therefore uh, he gave a dissenting opinion in this particular case. So, um, uh, basic rights such as equality, life and liberty, right to free speech, all these you know, are considered as basic rights containing basic values so therefore they were uh, uh, taken away are we amending by way of taking away the constitutional amendment so what do you mean what do you think of that are we amending the constitution or substituting a brand new constitution so therefore whether you amend the constitution or substitute the constitution whatever you might be you can do that but the basic features of the constitution cannot be destroyed, cannot be changed. India's constitutional history for the first time, he, it was the uh, Justice Madolkar who used the gun. I can say that it was uh, Justice Madolkar who has sown the seeds of basic features uh, of the constitution, basic features of the constitution in Sajjan Singh case. It is not the... Um, uh, Keshwananda Bharati case. So, however, uh, unfortunately, it was a, a minority decision or a dissenting opinion. And uh, so he opened that uh, basic features were indicated in the preamble. So, though the framers of the constitution, there was no mention about the basic structure doctrine in the constituent assembly, nor in subsequent times also, uh, and the constitution throughout. Uh, the uh, basic structure, uh, the word is uh, silent. It is not uh, clearly mentioned in the uh, draft constitution, but yet no, the values, the basic values uh, enshrined in the, um, what is that, uh, preambulary message where the basic features indicated in the preamble, including what is that, Justice, liberty, equality, fraternity, all this, all, they are all values which had uh, uh, to endure for all the time, all the time to come. So it is not only for sub, one a particular period, say for uh, one year or a few years or 10 years, how the reservations were made, you know, to, um, in a representation of people's house. It is for 10 years. It is not like that. It's a preambulary message is containing values. It is forever. So therefore, um, here we can say that it is very interesting to note all the constitutional law students. You must learn that Justice Madolkar, who referred here while making such a dissenting opinion in identifying, or rather I can say the seeds of the sown, uh, the seeds were sown uh, in uh, the Sajan Singh case regarding the basic structure doctrine he referred so what is the basis for this if you take that no so many other cases you are, are constitutional students you might have studied so many uh, maneka gandhi decision ak gopalan's case uh, on so many landmark decisions so if you take that no the persuasive value of the decisions given by american supreme court was taken see maneka gandhi when almost uh, natural law doctrine was applied um, where uh, the um, the scope of Article 21 has been widened and nurtured. What is that law means? It is not a mere enacted piece of legislation as envisaged under, uh, no, what is this, A.K. Gopalan's uh, court, but it is something uh, more. What is that law means? Just fair and reasonable, you know, isn't it? All of you remember that. So this is, uh, what is the basis for this American Supreme Court decision given in Mann versus Illinois? So that was, uh, though you may ask a question immediately that how, uh, I mean, uh, American uh, Supreme Court uh, decisions are binding on the Indian courts. Definitely it is not binding, but persuasive value may be taken into consideration. So lot of uh, uh, judgments uh, 
uh, were read into the Indian uh, constitution also, read into so it's not directly, but on the basis, uh, the similar situation, and it was applied and it was uh, uh, taken away. So it has taken. So therefore, uh, here also, Justice Madhulkar, as a dissenting judge, he has relied on, uh, while, uh, I mean, uh, identifying the, or rather, uh, um, find the uh, phrase uh, basic features, uh, he has uh, referred the decision uh, uh, given by the Supreme Court of Pakistan in uh, um, Fazul, Fazul Qadar Chowdhury versus Muhammad Abdul Haq. Fazul Qadar Chowdhury versus Muhammad Abdul Haq. And so in this case, the Supreme Court of Pakistan uh, made it very clear that Certain essential features of the constitution could not be taken away. Once again, I am repeating the Supreme Court of Pakistan on an occasion in this particular case, Fazul Qadar Saudari versus Muhammad Abdul Haq. In this particular case, the court made it very clear that court in the sense, Supreme Court of Pakistan made it very clear that certain essential features of the constitution could not be taken away, could not be destroyed, could not be altered, could not be changed at all. So therefore, Justice Madolkar, in his dissenting opinion, he has referred this decision, relied upon the Pakistan Supreme Court decision, he gave dissenting opinion. So therefore, I can say that this was the seed that eventually blossomed into basic structure doctrine in Keshwananda Bharati, right? So all of you, I think you remember, those who are uh, beginners, uh, I mean, uh, in the first and second years, uh, students, you please, uh, you may note down also. Sometimes you may get this type of questions in uh, uh, competitive examinations. So therefore, uh, uh, once again, I'm repeating, uh, see, the, uh, uh, no, what is that? The importance of uh, basic structure doctrine uh, for the first time in the history of constitutional law um, as uh, uh, coined, as uh, uh, come into existence uh, in the form of uh, uh, basic features in Sajan Singh case itself. So here uh, I would like to, uh, just uh, coming out of uh, the basic structure doctrine, I would like to uh, mention here, uh, what is the role of dissenting opinion? It's a very important uh, dissent. Uh, dissent is the essence of democracy, right? So therefore, uh, nowadays, if you see that, no, very rarely we can see in dissenting opinion, all are unanimous judgments, most of rather we can say. So, so therefore, dissenting opinion was very important in the development of constitutional jurisprudence. Any one of you, you may take up for this uh, um, what is that uh, project works? So as a part of internal components, uh, you may take up what is that uh, uh, what is it, each and every subject, uh, what is that um, uh, project work? So you may take whether it is a project work or assignment like. So you have to take uh, such type of uh, what is the role of uh, dissenting yeah, opinion? Pardon, sir? Yes, sir? So what is the role of a dissenting opinion in the development of constitutional jurisprudence? It's a very important area, right? So dissenting, if you take that, just now I made a mention, uh, A.K. Gopalan's case. A.K. Gopalan's case, see, Article 21, even if you uh, see today, when it was uh, drafted in the year, uh, adapted in the year 1949, um, November 26th and came into force subsequently in the year 1950, January 26th. You know very well that. See, what was the uh, content of Article 21 that 18 words, even today, it is still as it is, uh, these 18 words. No person shall be deprived of his life and liberty except according to the procedure established by law. Not even a single letter nor a single word is either added nor deleted. Right? So therefore, but the interpretation when it has come to that, what was given a, a dissenting opinion by Justice Fazal Ali in A.K. Gopalan's case, after two and a half decades, it, it became the 
majority opinion in Maneka Gandhi decision, right? I think uh, all of you might have studied in you know, constitutional law subject. So what was uh, dissenting opinion given by Justice Fazal Ali in A.K. Gopalan's case? Procedure established by law means it is not mere enacted piece of legislation. It is something more. It must be a law here. Procedure established by law must be a reasonable law. But that was deliberately not accepted by the Supreme Court in uh, um, A.K. Gopalan's case. That was not the intention of the framers of the Constitution. Had they intended, they would have explicitly mentioned. On the other hand, the due process clause was deliberately omitted. Right? It was uh, uh, no uh, has no application in India due process clause. And so therefore, we need not follow the reasonable procedure. So that was the uh, decision, majority opinion, A.K. Gopalan's decision. But Fazal Ali gave dissenting opinion. He said that due process, it is, uh, it is not Article 21 that has conferred, um, what is that, right to life and liberty to an individual. If you see, that is the reason why, how carefully the framers of the Indian Constitution has uh, used the terminology. It is not Article 21 that has conferred life and liberty to individual, right? Do you agree with this? Is it Article 21 that has conferred life and liberty to us? How many of you can say yes or how many of you can say no? Is it so? No response from the audience. Okay, so here, A.K., um, I mean, Justice Fazal Ali, he said that it is not Article 21 that has conferred right to life and liberty. It is, it is inherent in each and every human being. The moment when you born, you are inherent with uh, certain uh, rights, uh, life and liberty. It is not Article 21 that has given, but Article 21, you use, you use, uh, carefully you follow, you go through the uh, wordings, the terminology used in Article 21. No person shall be deprived of. It is not Article 21 that has given, it is already with, it is with you, but Article 21 gives only protection to your life and liberty, right? So if any person deprives your life and liberty by any act, any person, or by any way, way of any act, any law, if our life and liberty is deprived of, then Article 21 comes into picture. I am here. So I will take care of your interest. So I am here to protect you. So it gives only a protection to life, your life and liberty, which is already inherent in you. Right? So therefore, uh, Fazal Ali, he made it very clear that Unfortunately, it was dissenting opinion. So, what is dissenting opinion today? Tomorrow, it will, it will be a majority opinion in uh, some other case. Right? So, how? How? Yes, ma? Yes? Pardon, I am not able to. It's not clearly audible, ma? It's not clearly audible. May I? Shall I continue? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So, therefore, <laughs> like that, there are so many cases where uh, uh, dissenting opinion uh, um, was given. Uh, no, subsequently, it has played a crucial role uh, in the development of constitutional jurisprudence. Um, an another landmark dissenting opinion given by Justice Khanna. Justice Khanna. Again, a legendary judge in the uh, Indian uh, uh, Supreme Court, Justice Kanna. May I know in which case? Anyone? Okay. So, Justice Kanna gave ADM Jabalpur case. Very good. He gave a dissenting opinion in. Uh, ADM Jabalpur case. What is that uh, 
uh, ADM, but at that time, so you know the consequences of, I don't want to go deep into that. Uh, just I have given, I came a little bit uh, out of uh, the uh, scope of uh, basic structure doctrine. These are all part and parcel of basic structure. So that's the reason why, though it is, uh, but uh, on the sequence, I am not going. So why I have come out, you know, I would like to make a mention about uh, the importance of dissenting opinion uh, in the constitutional uh, field. So that's the reason why I'm talking about. See, fundamental rights are basic structure only. So life and liberty is a basic structure. So if you take that life and liberty, whether Article 21 is sole repository of life and liberty or not. So that was the question. So just now I mentioned that it's not Article 21 that has come for life and liberty. It is inherent in every individual. So therefore, Justice uh, um, Khanna gave a dissenting opinion as a result of that. No, at that time, entire news print was under the control of the government, then uh, Indira, Madam Indira Gandhi government. So what happened, uh, uh, even it was not even the dissenting opinion expressed by Justice Khanna, in uh, ADM Jabalpur case was not published uh, in any of uh, the uh, papers or any uh, news items in the uh, I mean, uh, in India. It was uh, the New York Times that has published and the dissenting opinion given by Justice Khanna in ADM Jabalpur case was compared with that of the decision, dissenting opinion given by Lord Atkin in Liversidge versus Anderson. So these are all uh, you must be uh, in a position to know these are the minimum landmark decisions one constitutional law student should know, right? So this was compared, the role played by Justice Kanna was compared with that of uh, Justice, uh, that is also, that was also dissenting opinion of Justice, uh, uh, not, uh, you know, uh, who is a Lord uh, Atkin in uh, Liversidge versus Anderson case, right? That was in connection with the war and all. I don't want to go deep into that. Those who are interested, you may uh, search in the Google, you will be getting that. This is something at reasonable procedure. During war time, reasonable procedure need to be followed or not. So emergency and all, you might have studied national security and all, you might have studied these cases and all. So I don't want to uh, deviate myself from the basic structure doctrine. Coming back to this, no? So here, uh, Madolkar, who has coined the, I mean, who has sown the seeds of uh, basic features uh, doctrine, uh, and that was blossomed into, uh, I mean, a basic structure doctrine in Keshwan and the Bharti case subsequently. So in between, so after this, so the, the gist of these two cases, if you take that now, uh, Sankari so, so. Prasad case, first case, and Sajan Singh case, the second case, both the cases, if you take that, fundamental rights can be amended. Any part of the constitution, including part three, can be amended. So that means if any law passed by that, whether it is for the agrarian reforms or whatever law it might be. And so once it is uh, uh, law is passed, if that law takes away a bridges uh, by way of any amendment, a law is passed or anything, no. So if that law takes away uh, fundamental rights, uh, that can be valid, it is allowed. So that is what the, the gist of these two cases. But when it has come to another landmark decision, so uh, now this 17th amendment, it has again challenged in uh, uh, Golaknath versus state of Punjab. You know very well that the doctrine importance of prospective overruling, another doctrine was uh, uh, found in this uh, case prospective overruling. So what are the, the, to remove the difficulties created by Golaknath case. So wherein uh, Golaknath case subsequently another amendment, 24th amendment was passed. That is different issue. I will come back afterwards. So in the prospective overruling, either uh, the, the uh, decision, uh, earlier decisions, no, uh, given in Sankari Prasad and Sajjan Singh case, the court made it very clear that Justice uh, Koka Subarao, Chief Justice then, he made it very clear that justice, uh, uh, no, what is that? Prospectively overruled uh, these uh, decisions. And that means from the date of decision given by uh, the court in uh, Golaknath case, from that date onwards, uh, all these cases are, uh, uh, no, uh, similar cases 
may be overruled and prior to uh, whatever the cases which were uh, decided prior to this decision they remain valid that means sankari prasad and sajjan singh cases uh, what was the decision given by the supreme court in these two cases and all it is valid only it cannot be uh, touched so therefore uh, prospectively overruled doctrine was uh, um, uh, coined in this uh, uh, prospective overruling in this particular uh, case golaknath uh, versus state of punjab so subsequently what happened so in this case in the golaknath case several arguments were put forth in this so where uh, it is clearly mentioned that the power of parliament to amend the constitution is derived from article 245 read with uh, i mean uh, uh, what is that entry 97 of list uh, one of the constitution and not uh, under article 368 so therefore parliament has no power to change just like an ordinary law it cannot change the constitutional provisions constitutional amendment is entirely different so while making amendment to the constitution uh, the basic elements should not be uh, touched so therefore part 3 cannot be taken away it cannot be touched it cannot be abridged that is what uh, the essence of uh, the uh, i mean um, golaknath case so therefore fundamental rights cannot be touched the power uh, given under article 368 it is uh, an, uh, it is not an unlimited power maybe it is wider the power given to parliament might be wider wider but it it is not considered as unlimited power so therefore uh, uh, part 3 cannot be tested now it is very clear the sequence it is like a story the step by trend how it was sankari prasad sajjan singh these two cases part 3 can be amended but uh, when it has come to golaknath case part 3 cannot be amended it cannot be touched since it contains why it is part 3 very important here it is containing basic elements as enshrined in the preamble and that is reflecting in the part 3 of the constitution justice liberty equality fraternity all these uh, fundamental values containing that reflecting in, again uh, in uh, part 3 of the constitution therefore it cannot be touched so when it has uh, come to that uh, to remove the difficulties created by golaknath case what happened 24th amendment act was passed it was added to um, by way of uh, this amendment class 2 was added to 368 and uh, article 368 uh, wherein uh, power of parliament uh, it is not mere uh, the procedure to amend the constitution it is power of parliament to amend the constitution in such a way new phrase was uh, uh, added to that and the validity of 24th amendment when it was challenged in keshwan and the bharti case subsequently uh, particular uh, i mean uh, petitioner has challenged uh, the validity of uh, Kerala Land Reforms Act 1963, right? When uh, when it was pending before, but during pendency of the petition, what happened? Kerala Act was amended in the year 1971 and was placed in the ninth schedule. So it is uh, all these uh, changes were happened. Uh, I mean, uh, during pendency, that is amendment uh, has been taken place 1971 uh, and it was placed in the ninth schedule. Um, by way of uh, uh, 29th Amendment Act, by way of 29th Amendment Act. Once it is uh, added into the 9th schedule, what is the uh, importance, you know that, what is its uh, consequence? Once it is added to 9th schedule, what is its consequence? So it cannot be? Cannot be reviewed. Cannot be, it is not, it is subject to? it is not subject to judicial review it cannot be reviewed by the so you know very well that see from the date of keshavananda bharati it is very clear under vaman rao uh, uh, case no it was made it very clear that from the date of that is the reason why what is that from april 24th 19 uh, um, so on that day onwards the, when uh, the keshavananda bharati judgment was delivered from that the date of the decision given in Keshavananda Bharati on that day onwards, even if anything included in the ninth schedule is subject to judicial review, right? 
subject to judicial review, but it was not in practice for so many years till that problem was continuing. Once it is included in the ninth schedule, it is uh, uh, outside the purview of judicial review. That was practice. Uh, that practice was continuing even. That is the reason why in Tamil Nadu when uh, uh, reservation quantum was raised to 69% and that was kept in uh, ninth schedule. Why? Because simply because it is only in spite of the basic structure doctrine said that very clear that what is basic structure I will come to later. Judicial review is a basic structure. See, usurping the power of judicial review from the date of decision given in Keshwananda Bharati has no relevance. Judicial review cannot be taken away. Usurping the uh, judicial review power amounts to basic structure doctrine violation. So therefore, but this practice was continued till even uh, finally it was set at rest uh, uh, IR Coelho case. IR Coelho has made, made it very clear, explicitly mentioned that even if it is any law which is included in ninth schedule, it is subject to judicial scrutiny. Even prior to that, there are several occasions where, uh, see, I will tell you one uh, question here, a pertinent question. Um, what is the power of the president? Uh, in uh, issuing in uh, uh, issuing the proclamation of emergency order power of the president how can we what article 352 says or uh, the order issued by the president under 352 to proclaim to issue the order for the proclamation of emergency in a particular area or for the entire country or any part of the country or uh, under the grounds, uh, war, external, uh, uh, aggression, or war, rebellion, or whatever it might be, right? So earlier it was internal disturbance, and then subsequently it is changed. And, uh, okay, you know very well that. See, whether the satisfaction of the president, right? Whether it is a political question or a justiciable issue. Mere it is a political question or justiciable issue. Right. So for which uh, matter came up before, you know that this is the only one case. Bhutnath was the state of West Bengal. In that case, the question came up before, whether it is a political issue or uh, a justiciable issue. Right. See, to, to make it explicit, again, constitutional amendment is passed and one class is added to make it, what is that? See, the doc. Uh, what is that the satisfaction of the president uh, in issuing the proclamation order is final that is the uh, uh, consequence of the amendment so an amendment Bhutnath case it is only uh, explicitly mentioned that what is that um, uh, it is not a justiciable issue it is only a political power and once the uh, in accordance with the constitution president has to exercise his powers in accordance to uh, accordance with the constitution 53 it is made it very clear as a chief executive but he need only thing is here he has to consult the council of ministers and accordingly once in consultation with the council of ministers who said this prime minister if he exercises his power and then uh, 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 he uh, exercises his satisfaction in issuing the proclamation order, then it is said to be uh, president has acted or exercised his satisfaction in accordance with the constitution and it is only a political uh, uh, issue. It is not uh, a justiciable issue. That's what uh, Bhutanath case uh, finalized. To give effect to uh, this uh, Bhutanath decision, it's only a Supreme Court decision, no law, uh, made it very clear that no provision has mentioned about that it's not it is outside the purview of judicial review to make it explicit and uh, or to give effect to strong teeth to the decision given in uh, Bhutanath case what happened an amendment is passed to this uh, 352 again to made it uh, to make it explicit what is that the decision taken by the or the satisfaction exercised by the president in issuing the proclamation order of emergency on the grounds of so and so so and so is final but subsequently after 44th amendment and after so many other you know again uh, here also it is a glaring example of you no know, usurping the judicial review power 
when basic structure doctrine prior to this decision, even prior to this, the basic structure doctrine is uh, already, it is coined and it is uh, um, found and it has uh, laid down in a strong footing, strong foundation. How can uh, another court say that? It is 13 judge bench, higher bench. This is the so far highest bench so far. How a lawyer bench can uh, overlook the oversight the uh, no what is that um, the um, uh, decision so therefore uh, here it is nothing but usurping the power of uh, uh, judiciary so which is against the constitutional ethos and constitutional values <laughs> so therefore um, subsequent cases and 44 but much unfortunately much or fortunately we can say much literature is not developed on this area why because after 1975 emergency there is no national emergency so far there is no right so that's the reason why there is no much literature has developed to certain extent it is uh, a good thing and of course um, and 44th amendment also made it very clear and minerva mills case and so many other cases uh, it was uh, very clearly stated that judicial review cannot be taken away right so therefore so um uh, here uh, um sorry uh, prospective overruling was you know, where it has mentioned that uh, justice koka subarao he made it very clear that it is uh, uh, un, it is not unlimited power it is limited power only so uh, subsequently in uh, when it was challenged in uh, 24th amendment validity was challenged in keshwan and the bharti case and but during pendency of the petition also kerala act was amended in 97 that was also challenged by way of 29th amendment i told you already that was also challenged and where uh, the validity of that also uh, questioned in uh, keshwan and the bharti case and finally keshwan and the bharti case uh, they made it very clear that the power uh, if not uh, unlimited but it the parliament has uh, 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 the i mean uh, as very wide power to amend the constitution uh, because uh, law should not when we study in uh, law and social transformation what is that law should not be static and it should but at the same time uh, it should not uh, uh, be no what is that uh, it will not come to stand still law must be stable but it should not be static it should not come to stand still so therefore according to uh, with the uh, changing circumstances of the uh, society no it need to be changed so therefore it needs to be changed so therefore uh, amendment uh, is also uh, required sometimes it in certain areas uh, so therefore any part of the constitution can be amended supreme court made it very clear that and any part of the constitution including part three and um keshwan and the bharati we can say that explicitly overruled golaknath case golaknath is uh, very clear part three cannot be amended and keshwan and the bharati made it uh, very clear that it has uh, explicitly overruled um, um i mean uh, what is that um what is that uh, decision okay koka subarao uh, decision so therefore uh, explicitly overruled uh, Golaknath case uh, and made it very clear that um, uh, what is that any part of the constitution can be amended provided basic features uh, cannot be touched. Basic features of the constitution should be untouched. Right? So here I am asking you a basic question. You have to apply your mind. So what is the outcome of uh, Keshavan, uh, Keshavan and the Bharati case and what is the outcome of uh, uh, Golaknath case? Any one of you please? I must be very happy. I will be very happy if you say any one of you. What is the outcome of Golaknath case regarding part 3 amendment to the uh, part 3 of the constitution? Whether it can be amended, part 3 can be amended or not? No, it cannot be amended. It cannot be amended according to good, according to uh, Golaknath case. And according to Keshwan and the Bharati, 
it can be amended to it can be amended. Extent. it can be amended see therefore therefore once again therefore therefore i can say that golaknath is overruled in keshwananda keshwananda bharti right but if you understand here it is not golaknath is not overruled in keshwananda bharti on the other hand it was further reiterated further reiterated what is that part 3 cannot be amended according to golaknath right you only said right and yes. keshavananda bharati if you if you come to keshavananda bharati and the judgment itself it is mentioned golaknath is overruled yes it is overruled why part 3 any part of the constitution including part 3 can be amended provided basic feature cannot be touched that is what outcome of keshavananda bharat so therefore from this point if you think that golaknath is overruled in keshavananda bharati but what is basic feature part 3 also it can be amended provided basic feature should be untouched what is basic feature basic structure what is basic structure part 3 in certain cases is basic structure so therefore part 3 cannot be cannot be amended cannot be amended see what is outcome of golaknath case part 3 cannot be amended it is very clear explicitly mentioned it cannot be touched that's all parliament has no power to touch part 3 of the constitution it contains values right individual liberties no parliament no uh, i mean uh, organ of the government has power to touch the individual freedoms the real sovereignty is vested with the people and it cannot be right touched so that is what very clear in golaknath case coming to keshavananda but any part you can uh, amend provided basic features cannot be changed basic features should remain unaltered right so what is basic feature constitution is silent but it is uh, not exhaustive but it is very illustrious from case to case it is explicitly mentioned that from case to case it is derived by way of interpretation it is uh, the list is included um, and so many it is adding up so many instances of basic uh, features part 3 in certain cases uh, containing basic features liberty equality they are all uh, right justice all these basic elements basic values they cannot be touched upon right so therefore now you can say what is uh, mentioned in what was uh, um, uh, explicitly mentioned in golaknath case again it is reiterated in keshavananda bharati it is not overruled but it is so here it is explicitly mentioned part 3 cannot be touched here golak i mean when it has come to keshavananda bharati case part 3 anything can be amended provided basic feature can be unalterable can remain as as it is it cannot be touched so what is basic feature part 3 in such cases uh, it is basic feature therefore part 3 cannot be amended right so now you compare what is the outcome of golaknath case the same is the outcome of uh, here keshavananda bharati also so therefore you can say that okay, whether uh, uh, can you say after uh, analyzing this also uh, uh, i mean golaknath is overruled in keshavananda bharati do you agree with this statement do you agree with this statement no ma'am no see have you at no, any point of time uh, have you ever uh, analyzed in uh, such a way right so therefore uh, i mean uh, i am talking about uh, the first year or second year students when uh, uh, the first time when they going to study in constitutional law right of course fourth year fifth year students you might have uh, already noticed this point so golaknath is not overruled in keshavananda bharati it was further reiterated widen the scope of basic structure doctrine in uh, so golaknath is uh, further reiterated in keshavananda bharati right so i i hope uh, all of you agree with my 
views, right? And uh, coming to that, so therefore, uh, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, no constitution is silent with regard to the definition of uh, basic structure. So everything is fine. Basic struct, basic features cannot be destroyed. Basic feature cannot be destroyed. What is basic feature? How do we know that the basic feature? What constitutes basic feature? So therefore, where it is not defined by the constitution, it is not exhaustive. There is no exhaustive definition for this. It is illustrious from time to time, from case to case, depending upon. So in Keshwar and the Bharati, I don't want to touch upon this. Uh, sir, how much time uh, I have, sir? Can I continue for uh, how much time? That's also very important, no? And see, uh, so therefore, uh, this 13 page and uh, that uh, drama, political drama, I don't want to go deep into that. See, uh, you know that the uh, six judges uh, this side and six judges a minority. And who are the six judges? You know very well that uh, uh, what is uh, uh, mentioned that now. So where uh, they clearly uh, mentioned what is that? Um, um, Sikri, Sheelat and Grover, Hegde, uh, Justice Reddy and Mukherjee. Uh, these, these six judges gave uh, uh, majority opinion uh, and six judges. Another set of six judges like, you know, uh, A.N. Ray, Chandrachud, Matthew, Beg, Dwe, Deepalekar, all these, you know, they have given minority opinion. But only one judge but has uh, given concurrent decision, Justice Khanna. He is none other than Justice Khanna tilting uh, towards a small, uh, the needle towards a small uh, balance. Uh, what is it? Uh, tilting towards majority with the help of Justice Kanna, who has uh, again made it very clear that what was uh, um, mentioned by uh, Justice uh, J.R. Madolkar, he has almost uh, um, has expressed the similar views by Justice Kanna uh, in his uh, uh, majority, but concurrent judgment. He held that though there is no implied limitation on the amending power, but the power to amend does not include power to abrogate the constitution. There are no limitations upon the parliament to amend the constitution, I agree with, but at the same time, parliament has no power to, simply because it has power to amend the constitution, it does not include power to abrogate the structure of the constitution. Uh, so therefore, uh, uh, the word amendment, um, has postulated that now the old constitution must survive without any loss. According to Justice Kanna, what he has made it very clear that the old constitution must survive without any loss or identity. It must be retained through in the amended form. So therefore, the power does not include power to destroy or abrogate uh, uh, the basic elements of the or basic framework of the constitution, right? So therefore, the basic structure, uh, basic features, which was uh, already recognized by Justice Madhulkar, but unfortunately it was a dissenting opinion in a uh, Sajan Singh case, uh, almost uh, similar views were expressed by Justice Kanna in uh, majority opinion, uh, concurred with the majority opinion uh, in Keshwaranda Bharti case because of it's a slight uh, difference, thin difference uh, between minority and majority, but it's a, a landmark decision, a wonderful decision. Of course, it has its own criticisms and all. So that is, uh, and uh, see the, uh, when uh, it is mentioned that I already mentioned what is basic structure. It is not defined. Constitution is was silent, but we have to infer from the. Uh, I mean, we know very well that preamble is the, the key to open the minds of the makers of the constitution. If at all we want to read the minds of uh, the framers of the constitution, why? What was the intention of the framers uh, to include such? Uh, uh, I mean, a phraseology. Entire. See, ours is a very. Uh, lengthiest constitution, but the entire uh, such a lengthiest constitution uh, um, is uh, imbibed in the entire constitution. Such a lengthiest constitution is imbibed in as one small paragraph uh, uh, in the form of preambulary message. The entire constitution is reflecting in one paragraph of preambulary message, which is containing so many values, right? So basic values, where it is clearly mentioned that what is the basic feature of the constitution? If you say that supremacy of the constitution, it is not the 
Supreme Court or uh, legislative parliament or any other organ executive, it is not the Supreme, it is uh, the Supreme Court, uh, I mean, uh, the constitution that is supreme and supremacy of the constitution is basic fact. Uh, and the Republican and democratic forms of government, secular character of the government. Nowadays, uh, we, uh, we used to witness uh, uh, or we used to uh, heard much about uh, the word secularism and the instances that are uh, taking place against secularism and all uh, we used to come across with. Uh, so secularism is a basic feature of the constitution, secular character of the constitution. And, uh, you know, landmark occasion, SR my case uh, regarding this, whereas reiterated that. And uh, not only that, even uh, the Republican form of the democratic form of the government and the secular and federal character of the constitution, demarcation of power between legislature and executive and judiciary, separation of powers uh, is a basic structure. So like that. So from case to case, uh, the illustrations were included and various features were identified what constitutes basic structure. So sovereignty of India, democratic uh, character of our policy, um, then uh, unity and integrity of the country. Um, and uh, so all these you know, uh, freedoms of the individual, freedoms of the individual. Uh, so all these were considered as the basic features of the constitution. And not only that, even uh, landmark another landmark uh, uh, decision uh, uh, like now what is that uh, indira nehru gandhi versus rajnarayan so again in this case uh, rule of law judicial review so in this may, again made it very clear that rule of law is basic structure judicial review is basic structure and predominantly it has focused on uh, indira gandhi versus rajnarayan case uh, it has focused and much emphasized on what is that free and fair elections uh, is uh, uh, basic structure, right? So all this, you no, know, and subsequently in Minerva Mills case, uh, and finally, so what is that limited power of the parliament to amend the constitution? Parliament has uh, power to amend the constitution, but uh, the power must be very limited, limited power of the constitution, harmony, and uh, the balance between the bedrock of balance between part three and part four uh, is uh, the basic structure. So what is uh, important, whether part three or part four, both are right, equally important. To be frank, that fundamental uh, rights, uh, when compared to that, directive principles are more important. Uh, and then, and fundamental rights in certain cases, uh, basic features and judicial review, right, is the basic feature. So therefore, uh, uh, independence of judiciary is part of uh, basic structure. So all these uh, instances uh, and uh, again, uh, uh, 42nd amendment is again, it has included certain articles uh, to disturb this uh, doctrine. And uh, this finally, uh, and 42nd amendment, if you take that you no know, basic features of the constitution, uh, including uh, basic features of the constitution could be amended by way of 42nd amendment. It has uh, uh, included certain uh, clauses certain provisions and those uh, provisions you know uh, has given unlimited power and it can uh, uh, i mean what is that it can amend any feature of the constitution including basic feature that was the uh, worst part of uh, uh, 42nd amendment and so this amendment uh, uh, you now according to mr swaran singh chairman we can say that you no know, congress committee then uh, Constitution amendment put an end to any controversy as to which is supreme, but Parliament or the Supreme Court, uh, which is supreme. So, Party um, Second Amendment again. Uh, there's a big political drama, and it has uh, uh, during that particular time, uh, uh, particularly there was no rule of law, only rule by law at that time. Rule of law is a basic structure, but it's not rule of law. Uh, I mean, a rule by law. So. Uh, at that particular uh, time, no, so only rule by law that was not considered as a uh, uh, basic structure. As I earlier, earlier I mentioned that in uh, Waman Rao case and all other cases, uh, they made it very clear that from the date of uh, the decision given in Keshwananda Bharati case, judicial review uh, cannot be taken away uh, since uh, uh, judicial review is a uh, doctrine of, I mean, is a, is, it is containing a, 
basic element. So therefore, usurping judicial review is a, a violation of it is unconstitutional from the date of the decision given in Keshwan and the Bhati, that is April 24th, 1973. Uh, that means uh, judicial review was protected, even if any law which is included in the ninth schedule also, it can be challenged. But that was not uh, in practice uh, till uh, even uh, IR Coilo case uh, uh, when Supreme Court made it very clear that. So um, finally, uh, no, the Supreme Court got an opportunity in El Chandra Kumar case, uh, right? So it's another important, very important uh, decision. Uh, in this, uh, Supreme Court got an opportunity in this particular case. So where uh, no amendment passed by Parliament in future can bar the courts from uh, pronouncing uh, the judgments on its uh, constitutional validity. So that was uh, the decision given by um, L. Chandra Kumar case. Subsequently, and even uh, various uh, uh, recent times, no decisions uh, uh, given by um, uh, in uh, while upholding the doctrine of constitutional morality, uh, which is containing the principles of uh, you know, what is this equality, uh, fraternity, and uh, even uh, uh, the dignity, element of dignity, all these basic values. Uh, uh, so therefore, uh, uh, now finally, the problem was at that set at rest uh, earlier. What the uh, the so-called uh, uh, political parties and uh, when the government which are in ruling, uh, so they whenever they pass law and according to their uh, whims and fancies, they include in the ninth schedule uh, in in order to just to save those laws from the judicial scrutiny uh, they used to keep in but even if it is kept in uh, 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 in the ninth schedule it can uh, uh, you know uh, it is subject to judicial scrutiny so therefore uh, uh, with this uh, if you have any doubts uh, um, i so welcome for you and then any doubts may be clarified and with this, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Hello. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Thank you for your valuable guidance. Uh, my question is, since the doctrine of uh, basic structure uh, has a lack of constitutional basis, that is, it is not supported by any explicit provision in the constitution, and that too, it has not a lack, it uh, has a lack of clarity, and also it is pushing too much judicial activism and also violation of the separation of powers at the same time it is protecting our fundamental rights promoting judicial review and uh, ensures the stability and consistency of the legal system and preventing the authoritarianism so what do you think uh, what should be the way forward because uh, yes, right now what that's is that's what i told you very clear that the basic structure is not defined anywhere in the constitution but uh, if you understand the preambulary message, so preamble is uh, the entire constitution is reflecting the constitutional ideals and the constitutional values. The uh, intention of uh, the framers of the constitution is clearly reflecting in the preambulary message. If you understand the preambulary message, usually you can understand that what is basic feature, all the values. Contained in preambulary message like uh, you know, justice, uh, liberty, uh, equality, fraternity, uh, in, uh, you know, dignity, assuring the integrity, all these you know, are the features. Uh, they are uh, forming part of the uh, values of the constitution. So that cannot be destroyed. See, basic feature cannot be destroyed here in the sense, no, you can amend the constitution. You can alter the constitution, but at the same time, that is what uh, uh, Justice Khanna, who gave uh, um, minority concurring with the minority, uh, sorry, majority, who gave a judgment, a separate judgment, but he made it very clear that power to amend the uh, constitution, parliament has power to amend the constitution, but uh, while doing so, it has, uh, it, it, the power of the parliament is very, very wide, but at the same time, it uh, cannot be considered as unlimited power, but uh, the uh, original existence uh, cannot be changed. That's what he said that. So if you understand the preambulary message easily, you can understand what is basic feature of the constitution. The old constitution must survive without any disturbance. 
we can change it, we can alter it, we can amend the constitution, but the old constitution must survive. Why? Because old constitution here in the sense, uh, what are all the values reflecting in the preambulary message? So it permeates throughout the constitution. For example, equality, if you take that, no equality in the sun, uh, Oh, no, if you unequitable terms, uh, if you take that, uh, it is not only in from 14 to 18, but it permeates throughout the constitution. So it, it is uh, the duty of the um, uh, no parliament to uh, uphold uh, these uh, values. And if anything uh, happened to this, uh, any abrogation or any uh, disturbances happen to these values uh, by way of uh, uh, legislation or any parliamentary procedure, so Supreme Court definitely it will intervene. Cannot keep quiet. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Any other uh, yes. the basis on its morality and illustrate nature and flexibility can be termed basic structure as Raj Dharma. So second question, madam, whether clean and green environment also include basic structure based on SC Supreme Court recent judgment on right to protect uh, against adverse effects of climate change. Definitely, sir. Definitely, sir. See, when uh, life and liberty is considered as basic element of the constitution, uh, so without uh, there is no meaning at all, sir, in conferring life uh, without uh, having clean environment. How can we survive, sir? So without uh, uh, clean environment, we cannot, uh, so uh, in the absence of one right, that is uh, clean environment, we cannot exercise the uh, uh, the first basic right, what is that life and liberty. Definitely it is uh, concomitant right, sir. Without, uh, no, without uh, one right, uh, the other right cannot be exercised. Another question, independence of judiciary or separation of power must be preserved. Should it be extended by not allowing the retired judges of Supreme Court to hold, hold office of profit? Sir, uh, it is, we can say that the retired judges, uh, we cannot uh, make it as a hard and fast rule, sir. The uh, values and also the caliber, uh, the efficiency, eminence of uh, the retired judges uh, can be taken, but we cannot make a, a hard and fast rule that Supreme Court judges cannot be re-employed, but they cannot be re-employed for political uh, uh, purpose or something political uh, motivation. Any questions? Any other questions? So they and they are no. See, for example, uh, if you take that, you no, know, some of the glaring examples, uh, there is no necessity to appoint them as governors. But uh, in any uh, crisis of uh, you no, know, the constitutional uh, uh, issues uh, in resolving those constitutional matters, and at that time, uh, as a friend of the uh, court, you know, we can. Uh, uh, utilize their services simply because uh, we cannot say that uh, Supreme Court retired judges uh, can uh, their services cannot be utilized at all, but it should be used judiciously. Swasta, please join. Swasta Kankarya. Sir, I'll continue. Swasta is facing some network issue. I think all the questions are answered from the chat box. Moving forward. Thank you so much, ma'am, for such an insightful and informative lecture. This lecture will truly sow the seeds of constitutional values in the mind of budding lawyers. Now I request our beloved principal, Dr. C. M. Rao, sir, to give presidential address. Over to you, sir. So because of the presidential address, what I mean to say is that I am a very poor student of basic structure of law. Basic structure of law. Today only after 35 years of my study of law. Today only I came to know what is basic structure. Thank you, madam, for enlightening us on the subject into the constitution. When I am a student, I am very doubtful about the constitution. Every time they are saying some cases. 
this this case that case i am confused and because of that i didn't write for the first time and the second time i write the exam and today because of your lecture because of my compulsion to hear you i came to know about basic structure what is basic structure what is the importance of this particular preamble and i am proud to say this college is following in every function the recitation of the preamble at the beginning of the function to inculcate the habit of constitutional values and moral values among the students so on behalf of the management and staff i thank the organizers for a wonderful academic feast in the today's program thank you one and all for your patience hearing and asking enthusiastic questions thank you one and all thank you very much sir may i leave sir uh, ma'am just a minute i will propose vote of thanks and then we'll conclude this lecture thank you so much sir now we will move towards concluding part of this lecture series that is vote of thanks at the knowledge i thank our beloved principal dr c m rao sir who constantly encourages us to conduct such enriching programs i thank our vice principal dr shri kishan more sir iqsc coordinator dr aparna kotapalle ma'am nss program officer dr dinesh kulte sir and uh, dr pratibha girwane ma'am i thank ms karthiki karad for introducing today's resource person and ms swasta kankariya for anchoring I thank all the members of teaching and non-teaching non-teaching faculty. Last but not the least, I thank all the students for attending this online lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, sir. Madam, thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you, ma'am.